When a new device comes out, often the first thing that people are looking at is peak performance. So for example, we've just had the launch of the Galaxy S24 range, and there are lots of videos and talking about, including from me, about the peak performance, Geekbench scores, 3D Mark scores, and that's good and interesting stuff. However, another way to look at the performance is the sustained performance. How does the device perform after 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes and so on? So in this video, I want to look at the sustained performance across a whole range of different flagship processors. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so there are many different ways to compare the performance of a particular system on a chip. Of course, we have peak CPU and GPU performance, and that tells us what a mobile SOC can do under optimum conditions. However, it doesn't take long for those optimum conditions to pass. So therefore, we might look at sustained performance, which sees what happens when you run the test for a second time, a third time, 20 times. What are the thermals going to do? Does the processor slow down? is that peak performance really a bit of a cheat because it can do it like once for a very short amount of time. But if you ask it to do anything for a prolonged time, it just can't produce those uh, figures. So this reflects better the performance when you're using the phone for several minutes, especially when gaming. So which phones are we going to be looking at today? We've got the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. We've got the Samsung Exynos 2400. We've got the Google Tensor G3. We have the MediaTek Dimensity 9300 and we have the Apple A17 Pro. Now just a quick overview. I've covered this in other videos, so I will do this very, very quickly. The Exynos 2400 is a 10 core processor with one X4 cores, five 720 cores and then four A520 cores, all Cortex cores designed by ARM. The Tensor G3, because of the way it comes out, its cadence, it's using the processors, the core CPU cores from the year before. So it's got one X3 core and then four 715 cores and four A510 cores. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has got one Cortex X4 core then five a720 cores and then two so that's the difference one of the major differences here between this one and this one the Exynos 2400 is that this has got four of those this has got two of those but notice the clock speed is 2.3 gigahertz compared to 1.95 gigahertz the Dimensity 9300 the different one here because it uses an all big core setup so it's got four x4 cores and then four a720 cores and no efficiency cores no a 510, A520, nothing there at all. And then Apple designed their own cores. So all of these here to the left were all uh, ARM design cores. Apple designed their own cores. So we've got two revisions of the Everest cores here and four of the power efficiency sawtooth cores. One thing to note is look how high the clock speed is there on the A17 Pro, 3.78 uh, gigahertz. So the closest one to that, I think, is the 3.3 gigahertz from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So clearly a going to be a performance boost there. Of course, power efficiency uh, and thermals, which we're going to look at, of course, is a different matter. And then again, when it comes to the GPU, a whole range of GPUs here. AMD in the Exynos, Arm Mali in the Tensor, Qualcomm's Adreno in the Snapdragon, Arm Immortalis in the Dimensity 9300, which means you've got the ray tracing support there, and then Apple's GPU, which has its heritage from the Power VR GPUs from Imagination. So literally, except for the Tensor and the Dimensity, everyone else has got a unique GPU, and only the Tensor and Dimensity share a GPU a heritage from from the Arm Mali slash Immortalis. There, so very very different across the board here. So what does this mean in terms of GPU uh, performance when it comes to you know sustained performance? What's it going to mean? So let's hit our first graph here. So these are all of the phones. This is the first time you run the 3D Mark Wildlife test. This is the first score that you get. And then we go through different runs here. And as we go through the runs, we can see how the scores, and they all go down. So that's the first thing to note, they all go down. Uh, some of them more steeply. So for example, you look here at the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus, you can see how this goes down. You look at the Pixel 8, well, that actually does a lot better at maintaining a kind of an even score. So let's put some things of notice on here. First of all, notice how these top three, so that's the Galaxy S24 Plus with the Qualcomm. You've got the Dimensity in the Vivo X100 Pro, and you've got the Samsung S24 with the Exynos in it, they all go down quite a lot in the first three, four, five runs. 
but it is worth pointing out that the Exynos does do a little better before it starts to plateau out here. So a different curve uh, it takes about eight runs before it starts to, to plateau out. And then here at the end, we can notice that first of all, the Vivo is being a bit erratic here at the end. But more importantly, it's worth noting that, for example, uh, these all kind of bunch up here with the exception of the Snapdragon, which still is a bit higher. But you can see by the end here, they're all kind of, kind of, you know, together. So if you're using it for a long time to over 20 runs, then they all kind of amalgamate to a kind of a constant score. And just to put a number on it, the Snapdragon there drops 41% over 20 runs. So peak performance is one thing, 20 runs later, you're looking at a 41% drop in performance. And now there's a slightly different test, the Wildlife Extreme test. So again, we can see a similar thing. We can see that how they all drop down over time. However, look at this, straight down, this is test number two. So from test number one to test number two, the iPhone takes a huge drop. So this is important. So it may have a very good first time you run it, but the second time you run it, it's way down, way lower than the Exynos, way lower than the Dimensity, way lower than the Snapdragon. So note that. And then in all fairness, it does stay fairly stable, but that's it. You, you Once you get that first run, you're down uh, there. So it's a 31% drop in the first run. Again, like on the other slide, four, five, six runs, you see this coming down of all the other chips, Snapdragon, the Dimensity, the Exynos, and then a kind of a, a leveling out. And the Exynos drops 40% over the entire test. So that's very similar to what we saw from the Snapdragon in the previous test. So these are the kind of numbers we're looking at that you are gonna expect a 30, 40% drop in performance. In the iPhone's case, almost immediately in the other phones over time as you run the test longer and longer and longer. And finally, we have here the ray tracing test. There are less phones in this one because all of them support ray tracing. So what do we notice here? The Exynos does very well, stays ahead for a lot of the time. Again, the iPhone drops 27% straight away, second run straight down and then stays stable. So, you know, the iPhone's peak performance is one thing, but run that thing twice and you're gonna get a different kind of number out of it. And by the end here, except that it seems to be one dip here around about 15, we do see that the Snapdragon comes out better than the Exynos over time. So I think that cross point was around here. So after seven runs, you kind of get the Snapdragon does better and really it's stable. I think this was an outlier drop here, but basically you can imagine that line across there and that makes, shows its performance. Again, the Vivo X100 Pro, a bit erratic at the end, which is what we saw in the other tests as well. So what can we say about this? Well, cooling is a feature of the phone and it impacts the processor's performance. Larger phones dissipate heat better, meaning there'll be less throttling. So there's a physical dimension to this. How big is the actual phone? However, if less heat is generated in the first place, then of course, less cooling is needed. So the processors that don't generate as much heat will do better, uh, no matter how good or how bad the uh, cooling is. The latest Android flagship processors have good peak performance. However, over the first five runs, they will drop. And the overall drop after about 20 runs is around 40%, sometimes more. And the iPhone drops after the second run. This is the thing I was mentioning earlier, as much as 31%, but tends to remain consistent over that. It demonstrates the true danger of looking only at peak performance in optimal conditions. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Sustained performance, important for you you prefer peak performance, do let me know in the comments below. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.